excited to be here. My name is Pastor Keith, and this is my good friend Ethan, and we are continuing our series on heroes from the Bible. Now, Ethan, since I've got you up here, I want yeah. to ask you a question. Okay. Can you tell me what makes a good friend? Oh, well, that's easy. Someone that might share some cookies with you good. or invite you to their birthday party yeah. or, oh, you know, very awesome. kind. Yeah. Well, well, what about this? What are some characteristics of a friend mm. or a good friend? Okay. Trustworthy. Trustworthy. I like that. Kind. Very good. Kind. Excellent. Helpful. Helpful. Very Someone good. that you can rely on. Oh, I like that word. Ethan, I'm glad you said that because I was thinking about that word relying on somebody. Yeah. And that means you have to trust them and you have to know that they're there for you. So I thought we'd start with a game today. I know how much you like games. I, I like games. So we're going to play a game where you're going to need a friend. So I need you to get you a friend. Oh, okay. Hey, Victoria, come on up. All right. Perfect. Come on down, Victoria. You and Ethan are going to play this game. Okay. I like to call this the friend challenge because what you're going to do is you're both going to sit down on the floor back mm -hmm. to back. Oh, that's easy. Okay. So go ahead, sit down back to back. All right. Now I want you to link arms. Okay, easy. And put your arms out. Now, here's the challenge. I'm going to have you guys on the count of three stand up together. Now, here's the catch, though. You cannot unlink your arms, and you cannot touch the ground with your hands. Oh, no. The only way this works, guys, is you have to rely on each other, work together, and press at the same time to see if you can stand up. All right. Are you up for it? Let's give it a try. All right, here we go. All right, you think they can do it, guys? Let's find out. Are you ready? All right. On your mark. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Put your legs straight out. Oh, straight out? Yeah, straight out. You can bend them once I say go. Oh, okay. All right, are you ready? Let's give it a go. On your mark. Get set. Go! All right, let's try it. Wait, let's see, work let's together. see. Go, push, go, go. Push, 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 push. push. Oh, they're giving oh. it a try. Oh, we're getting close. Yes! Hey, Good job! Go. Good job! Right. Excellent! Good Excellent! Job. Now, in order to play this game, what do you think was the key, Ethan? I guess trust in her and trust in that she'll yeah. trust me. And they had to know that each other had their back literally and pressing at the same time. Victoria, great job with that. Thank you so much. Now, Ethan, since we were talking about a friend, yeah. let's go to the opposite extreme. Oh. What's an enemy? Oh, well, an enemy is someone that would hurt your feelings or yeah. say mean things to you sometimes. Yeah, exactly. Now, oh. what would some characteristics be of an enemy? Oh, gosh. Someone mean. Yeah, that's for sure. Someone selfish. Oh, yeah. Someone really hurtful. Very good. Those are excellent things. Now, I got a question. Uh-huh. Is it easy to be friends with somebody who's friendly to you? Yeah. Of course. But what about this? What about somebody who's your enemy? Yeah, that's not very easy. No, it's not. And I got a question. Uh -huh. Do you think an enemy can change and actually become your friend? I don't think so. Ah, uh, that's what we would think, but... We're going to learn today that they actually can. What? Do you realize there's a lot of things that change? Like, for instance, a caterpillar can become a butterfly. Huh. A tadpole becomes a... Frog. Yes. And even water, liquid, can become either a vapor or even... Ice. Yes. So things change. But here's the thing. Uh -huh. Only God can change the heart. And I want to tell you a story today about how God changed somebody's heart. Now... Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get you to pull these props up with me. Sure. Because you're going to help me tell this story today. Oh, no now, problem. what we're going to do is we're going to use these props for you. Okay. We have a sword. We have some handcuffs. We have a light. We have a blindfold. The number three. Some water. Nice. Some food. Tasty. And a pillow. Hmm. Now, all you have to do is when we get to a point in the story... You just hold up the object that goes along with it. That's easy. Pretty easy, isn't it? Yeah. But I forgot to tell you one thing. You're going to do this blindfolded. Oh, boy. Oh, yes. And you'll find out why really soon. But I'm not going to be able to see these That's props. That's the point. And to make it a little bit more fun, I'm going to kind of mix them around a little oh, bit. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Uh, We're going to have fun with this today, Ethan. I uh, bet right, we are. So let's mix this up. All right, very nice, very nice. All right, that should work. Now, guys, our story today comes from the Bible, and it comes from the book of Acts. Now, our story is about a guy by the name of Saul. 
Now, most people would say Saul was not much of a hero. Now, the reason they would say he's not much of a hero is because Saul was not a very nice person. A matter of fact, Saul would actually try to kill Christians. Good job, good job. Oh, and not only that, there were other times he would take Christians and actually put them in jail or in prison. Yes, very nice, very nice. Now, here's what happened. Paul was going to Damascus to put Christians in prison. prison. Exactly, good job. And on the way, something happened that changed his life forever. As he was walking along the path, a light came and blinded him. He oh. fell on his face and he heard a voice from heaven. That voice said, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Now, that word persecute, it means to hurt him. Oh. And Saul didn't know who this voice was. He said, who is this? And the voice said, this is Jesus who you're persecuting. Mm. Well, Saul got up and said, what do I do now? The voice told him, go to the next city and wait, and I'll tell you. Well, when Saul got up, guess what? He was blind. He couldn't see anything. The men that were with him, they heard, but they didn't see anything. So they took Saul to the next city. Well, when he got to the home, he was offered some food. Aha! All right. But he didn't eat the food. <laughs> <laughs> he was also offered something water or oh. something to drink. Oh, oh, all right. But he didn't drink either. <laughs> yeah. Man. For three days. Oh, three. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. I know it's here somewhere. Three I know days. Oh, oh, oh. Hey! Three days. <laughs> Saul was blind and could not see. And he spent that time praying to God. Well, God was also working on somebody else's heart by the name of Ananias. Huh. Actually, God came to Ananias in a vision mm. and said, Ananias, I want you to go to this house and find Saul. <gasps> now, Ananias had heard about Saul. Mm. He had heard how he had put <gasps> Christians in jail and in prison and how he had even <laughs> killed Christians. And he was scared. He said, God, we've heard about him. But God said, I have a plan for him. He is going to now tell people about God and about me. <gasps> so Ananias goes to the home and he finds Saul praying. He walks over to Saul and he puts his hands on him. And when he does, scales fall off his eyes <gasps> and he's able to see. Wow. Well, once Saul's vision was restored... He realized there was one true God. He got up and was baptized right away. He began to eat and drink and gain his strength back. And you know what? God even changed his name from Saul to Paul because it was like he was a whole new person. He brought thousands and thousands of people to know God. He even wrote 13 books of the Bible. Man, what a transformation. And you know what? The Bible makes it very clear to us with many stories just like this one that God loves us all equally. It doesn't matter how tall you are, how fast you can run, how strong you are, what color your eyes are, how long your hair is, the color of your skin. God loves us all equally. And that's something we all have in common. But you know what else we have in common? We all have sin. We're all sinners. And what that is, is it means something that you messed up. It could mean telling a lie or cheating on a story that maybe you have to write or it could even mean disobeying your parents. And the Bible says we all have sin. That means you and I have sin, mom and dad, our grandparents, even Pastor Keith. And God sent his son to earth, Jesus, to take away our sin so that we could have a relationship with God. Because here's the thing, guys. God loves you so much. You know what? He created you. He knows everything about you. He even knows how many hairs are on your head. But he wants to know you even more than that. And in order for that to happen, you have to have a relationship. He doesn't want to just be your creator. He wants to be your heavenly father. So if you want to have that relationship with God, it's actually really simple. The first step is just like we were talking about with that sin, admitting that you're a sinner. Now, I know sometimes it's hard to admit when you messed up, but we all have done it. 
The only person ever to not do it was Jesus. John 3.16 says, God sent his son to earth to die on the cross for our sins, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And guys, Jesus took our punishment when he was up on the cross so that we could have a relationship with God. If you believe in that, and you want to make that choice to invite Jesus into your life, just like Saul did, he made a huge transformation. You can make a transformation too, but only if God is in your heart. So if you want to make that choice today, I'm going to lead you in a prayer that you can pray right now to invite Jesus into your life. Let's bow our heads and mean it with all your heart. Dear God, I admit I'm a sinner. I have sinned against you. I believe that your son Jesus died on the cross for my sins. Today, I ask you, Jesus, please come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Thank you, Jesus. I love you so much. Amen. Woo! Guys, if you prayed that prayer, let me tell you something. That is the best decision that you could ever make, and it lasts forever and ever. So you know what? Let's break out the cookies and milk. Let's break out the Kool-Aid, and let's celebrate. Let's have a party. Go tell your mom, your dad, your grandma, grandpa, brother, sister, whoever is around, that you prayed that prayer to ask Jesus into your heart, because that is the best decision you could ever make, and they are going to want to celebrate with you. And similarly, we want to celebrate with you too. So if you will contact us here at Cascade Hills Church and let us know you prayed that prayer, we are going to celebrate with you and the incredible decision that you have just made.